Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will study two very special type of sequential circuits, that is register and counters. First, we will study register, then we will study counter. Basically, counters are a special type of registers that we will study. Okay. So now, what is a sequential circuit that you already know? So combination circuit means a circuit in which the output depends only on the current input. So that is your combination circuit. And what are the examples? The examples of combination circuit you already know, like logic gates. So the logic gates, AND gate, OR gate, NAND gate. Okay. Similarly, your multiplexer, your demultiplexer, encoder, decoder. Okay. Or you can say full header, half header. Okay. So basically, they like carry look ahead header, carry look ahead header. Okay. And ripple carry header, ripple carry header. So basically, all these circuits like decoder. So these are combination circuit what it means it means that okay you give the input and you will you will get the output basically the output only depends on the current input okay but in a sequence circuit what happens that the output also depends the output the current output will depend on current input also on the previous inputs okay so in this sequence circuits you can notice that okay you can notice that there is this is your sequence circuit now you will invite uh, these are the current inputs let us assume these are the current inputs okay now you can notice that the output will actually depend on this output it will actually depend on these current inputs also on the previous inputs on the previous outputs basically this circuit this sequence circuit has to remember the previous history of the outputs and inputs okay so for that we need something memory okay because this sequence circuit has to memorize okay what has happened in the past so in the past all the things that happened in the past what are the inputs that you have applied and what were the outputs okay so these these things this sequence circuit has to remember and for that we need something called memory okay so there is something called we need to memorize we need to memorize the previous history okay so that so that uh, for that we need memory okay now what is a memory so basically sequence circuit contains memory elements okay and we already know what are the memory elements memory element the very basic memory element is latch comma flip flop okay so this latch and flip flop these are the very basic memory element so what is a flip flop you know in a flip flop is basically one bit storage device i can say okay so this flip flop this is one bit storage okay what it means it means that this is your flip flop now this can be d flip flop jk flip flop sr flip flop okay t flip flop or any other flip flop basically you can create new flip flop xy flip flop ab flip flop okay so you can notice flip flop what is a flip flop that is a one bit storage device okay so you can notice this is one bit storage device now in this what will happen in this flip flop let us assume this is d flip flop okay so let us okay this can be any flip flop actually so let us assume this is any flip flop now in this flip flop we can store either zero or one okay so this is one bit storage means you can store zero if you want you can store zero or you can store one okay so <clears throat> that is the reason this flip flop is also called by stable device okay so you can notice memory element now a memory element can store a, a very basic a fundamental memory element can store one bit okay and you can notice flip flop comma latches these are the basic these are the very basic memory elements and that is the reason because flip-flop has one bit storage flip-flop can either store zero or it can store one okay at any point of time either this flip-flop is storing zero or this flip-flop is storing one so that is the reason this flip-flop is also called by stable device okay by stable means two states because this has two states two states means either this can be storing zero or this can be storing one now you can notice that what we want we want okay <clears throat> let us assume you want to store four bits but you have flip-flop now let us assume you have some flip-flop let us assume you have some deep flip-flop now in this deep flip-flop what we can do we can store one bit one bit we can store but let us assume to store four bits if you want to store four bits or maybe eight bits or maybe 16 bits or maybe 64 bits if you want to store four bits then what we need so we need four d flip flops because four flip flops we need so you can notice we need four flip flops now each flip flop can store one bit this can store one bit one bit one bit one bit so this is how you can store four bits so if you want four bits if you want to store four bits then you need four flip flops if you want to store n bits if you want to store n bits then what you need you need basically n flip flops okay to store i can say okay to store n bits what you need you need n flip-flops because one flip-flop will store only one bit 
okay so this is how so this is this uh, all these things you already know okay i am just uh, revising all these concepts for you okay because you already know that a flip flop is a one bit storage device okay you can store one bit and that is the reason you it is, it is called by stable device because it has two stable states either this flip flop can be in state 0 or it can be in state 1 if it is storing 0 then we will call it that this flip flop is in state 0 and if this flip flop is storing 1 then we will say that this flip flop is in, is in state 1 okay so now okay what are the applications of flip flops so you can notice that if you have if you have four flip flops then you can create a four bit storage device yes or no so you can notice that with the four flip flops or i can say with n flip flops if you have n flip flops okay with n flip flops we can create we can we can basically we can create n bit storage device okay n bit storage device we can create okay so okay we what we can do we can take n flip flops okay like this so these are your i can say that these are your n flip flops so okay each flip flop can store one bit so like this we can store n bits we can store here okay so okay now this type of storage devices this type of storage devices we call them registers we call them registers so i can say that what is a register a register is basically n bit storage device okay like 4 bit register 8 bit register 16 bit register so you can notice flip flop have many applications we will study all these applications we will study we will study register then we will study counter then okay we will study storage register shift register and frequency divisor divider okay so basically all these applications we will study and the first application that we will study is register what is a register register is simply n bit storage device okay with one flip flop you can store one bit with n flip flop you can store n bit so if you put n n flip flops if you put okay if you connect n flip flops then you will get n bit storage device and this n bit storage device this is called register so this register concept you already uh, you uh, also study in computer organization okay in operating system in many subjects you will study this register concept okay so basically in our computer in your computer organization subject you will study that you have registers okay you have like okay you have 8 bit register or you have 4 bit register so you have something called okay ra this is a 4 bit register okay another register you have let us assume this is rb this is also 4 bit register so what is the register register is basically an bit storage device so this is your 4 bit register so you can put a 4 bit data okay you can put 4 bit data here so now we will say that this data we are storing so this data 1001 this 4 bit data we are storing in this register ra okay similarly in this register rb also you can store some data for example maybe 0000 so this data we are storing in register rb so this register concept you you study in computer organization operating system now what we need to do in those subjects when you study this concept okay we don't basically we don't worry about how internally this data is stored okay like okay basically we just uh, we just work with this register but we don't worry about the implementation of register how to implement this register how to put all these n flip flop together and how to create an okay n bit register okay so this is what we need to study in this lecture okay now first you you can notice this is just your flip flop okay so if you have a d flip flop and you can notice that your d flip flop let us assume this is uh, positive edge triggered so it means that whenever your clock okay you have a clock okay so whenever your clock is going from low to high okay whenever your uh, whenever your clock is basically on the rising edge so you can notice on the rising edge what will happen whatever data you are applying here okay whatever is the input that input will be stored okay and that input will be available on the output so you can notice that let us assume that okay on this on this input you are applying one and now what will happen when your clock is going from low to high okay then in that case because your this flip flop is a positive edge triggered this is the symbol for positive edge triggered okay so that is the reason when your clock is going from low to high then what will happen this data that you are applying on the input of this d flip flop this data will be stored okay so this data will be available on the output so we say that this one is stored and now this is available on the output okay if you want to if you want to use this data then you can use from here okay so because this data this data one this is stored here so this data one is stored here now if you want to use you can use it okay 
so this is the point so you can notice when okay when this one is applied on d okay now you can notice q will become this this output will become one when when this clock is going from low to high okay now similarly you can notice that if you apply the input zero on this d flip flop okay then again this this will happen when your clock is going from low to high then what will happen this input will be stored and it will appear on the output now you can you can use this okay so so we say that this data is stored in this d flip flop so you can notice one flip flop can store one bit okay and now what we want we want basically n bit storage device so because we want a storage device so we will study register okay after some time after few lectures we will also study what is counter okay counter is basically a special type of register that we will study after some time so what is a register you can notice a register is basically group of flip flops you can you can notice group of flip flops and okay each one of them okay where is sharing a common clock so remember in a register okay so let me just give you the register diagram so a register let us assume you have let us assume you have three bit register let us assume you have three bit register because register is what register is a n bit storage device so let us assume you have three bit storage device so this is your three bit register okay so you have three flip flop let us assume you have a d flip flop remember you can have any flip flop you can have jk flip flop okay sr flip flop or any new flip flop you can have okay but normally usually we have d flip flop okay because d flip flop is uh, usually used for storage for data storage okay so you can notice let us assume you want to create three bit storage device so three bit register you want to create okay then how to create three bit register so three bit register means you need three flip flop okay so this is a d flip flop this is a d flip flop this is a d flip flop this is the q output this is the q output now what you do so you connect three d flip flops you connect and all of them are basically okay they have they have same clock okay so you can notice here register is a group of flip flops each one of them sharing a common clock so remember all of them are sharing a common clock this is your clock okay so this flip flop this flip flop and this flip flop all these three flip flop they share a common clock okay now you can notice and this register is capable of storing uh, okay so basically uh, i can say n bit of storage okay so you can say is a grip okay uh, okay each one <laughs> yeah each flip flop can store one bit each flip flop can store one bit n bit register okay has n flip flop and it can store n bit of information okay so this is the point now let us see what is a counter this counter we will study after some time counter is a special type of register okay and what is okay so remember counter is also a, spe a special type of register counter is also a register okay but this is a very special type of register and what what is special about it this counter is basically okay it will uh, it is designed this is a register which goes through a sequence of states okay so basically this uh, this counter is basically is designed in such a way we design this counter in such a way so that it will produce a pre okay a prescribed sequence of states so basically there is there is a sequence of states we want for example let us assume state 1 then state 2 then state 3 okay okay and then let us assume state 1 so let us assume let us assume we want our counter to go from okay state 1 to state 2 state 2 to state 3 state 3 to state 1 so this is the sequence we want okay then we can use counter so you can notice counter is a special type of register okay which goes through so a counter is a special type of register which goes through a predetermined sequence of binary states okay you can take example example for example you take example of traffic light okay in this traffic light example you can notice in a traffic light example basically what you want this traffic light you want you want this traffic light to go through a sequence predetermined sequence of states so you can notice this traffic light should go through a predetermined sequence of states so what is that predetermined sequence of states so for example i can say that this light should go from red to yellow okay okay and then from yellow to blue and then from okay uh, green so i can say okay from yellow to green and then from green to okay from green to red okay so you can notice that this traffic light this is an example of counter okay because you can notice counter is a register which goes through a predetermined sequence of states so this traffic light is uh, a good example of counter because it goes through this state so this sequence so this traffic light will will always go through this sequence of states okay so this is uh, 
uh, this is the introduction of counter but don't worry about counter we will study counter after registers first we will study all the type of register what are the different different type of registers you can create okay so this is what you what we will study and then we will study counter okay so anyway so this is the introduction of uh, register and counter you can notice a register is basically a storage device and you can notice counter is a special type of register which goes through a predetermined sequence of states okay so the counter will go through a predetermined sequence of states okay so registers registers are okay we will also see some applications of registers one application is storing the data okay this is what we have seen if you want to store n bit of data then you can use n bit register so register one application is storing the data another application is moving the data okay so the applications of register are basically moving the data and storing the data so these are the two applications of registers okay now <clears throat> okay so let's just see okay so you can notice this now first we will study register okay so now we are we are not going to focus on counter okay once the register topic is over then we will study counter okay but first we will start with registers okay so in the next lecture we will start registers